Well, um, before I talk about the Ouija board, which I have a, a lot of experience with, I would like to say that under no circumstances do I, I recommend that anyone even <clears throat> remotely experiments with the Ouija board. And the reason for this is because it is, for me, um, the most easiest gateway um, to the spirit world. And the Ouija board has been outlawed, quite rightly so, in many countries around the world. But it has a fascinating history and we can't really make a film about the spirit world without actually talking about the Ouija board. In the 1700s, um, French travellers in North Africa, in uh, Morocco, in a town called Oujda, saw fakirs. Um, these are street performers, they're psychics, they're fortune tellers, they're soothsayers using an alphabet scratched out in the ground and using um, entranced snakes, cobras. Um, and what would happen is that the fakir, the word fake, by the way, comes from the word fakir. Uh, the fakir would um, produce a kind of trance-like state in the snake. He would ask questions and the snake would sort of nod its head at various letters scratched on the ground. Um, the French travellers brought back this idea that uh, you could get spirit messages uh, just by pointing at different letters and numbers. Um, they brought it back to Europe, um, it then made its way over to America and believe it or not, Ouija boards were marketed as a novelty um, by various games manufacturers in America and they corrupted the name of the town in Morocco uh, which was originally Oujda which is on the northern coast of Morocco. Um, it became known as Ouija and um, eventually then it became known as the Talking Board. have been a lot of bad cases of people receiving really messages from bad spirits via the Ouija board. Now <clears throat> the interesting thing is you don't even need a Ouija board to use the same system. You can go out and buy a box of Scrabble and you can lay out an alphabet and uh, the numbers from 0, uh, 1, 2, 3 up, uh, up to 9 hello, goodbye, and uh, you can um, just ask, is there a spirit in this house? Now, a spirit usually does come through, and if you're using an upturned glass, which is the most common way of getting the message from the spirit to, to spell out words, the force and the speed and the preciseness of the movements of that glass can be really quite astounding. I've seen the top layer of varnish removed in less than an hour from a wooden table um, by the force of uh, the spirits moving that glass. Um, now you know, this is very, very dangerous because the Ouija board is totally unlike ceremonial magic. In a magical ritual, um, you would entice, invoke a particular spirit. Uh, with Ouija, you just ask, is there a spirit in the house? And bang, usually the glass starts moving straight away. Now, um, here's a message for everyone who is involved in the so-called New Age. 
just because you have a discarnate spirit speaking to you through the Ouija board, that does not automatically imply that that spirit has good intentions. In actual fact, spirits lie and cheat and are mischievous exactly the same as people are. A typical example is um, where a spirit of a famous bad person, um, the favourite would be, say for example, Hitler, or a mass murderer like Stalin, and that would come through, spell its name out and start giving you information. Of course, a chill goes round the room. Um, you know, spirits lie, people lie, spirits are, you know, really basically a continuation of the personality of the person. Therefore, I would say never, ever use this um, system. Um, there are colleges where you can go to learn to be a medium, and I would never, ever dabble in any communication with the spirit world unless you have been uh, properly trained. In 1981, at Medjugorje in Bosnia, a ghostly apparition appeared to a group of six peasant children. The children would pray in a trance-like state and stare upwards, and the apparition would give them telepathic messages. Some of the children believed they were in the presence of the spirit of Mary the fabled mother of Jesus. During the 1980s, news of this persistent apparition soon spread and literally millions of people began to visit Medjugorje in Bosnia. The huge crowds of pilgrims who gathered at Medjugorje, more than 30 million over a period of three years, were never shown on television. The mainstream media never fully reported the persistent apparition in Medjugorje. Soon after, the country of Bosnia, part of the former Yugoslavia, was bombed into oblivion by the US and British governments. The entire country was transformed into a war zone, and the telepathic communication between the children and spirit of the Virgin Mary was violently disrupted. At Fatima in Portugal, Lourdes in France, and at San Sebastian de Garambandal in Spain, Millions of people regularly witness paranormal apparitions, but it is never reported on the mainstream media.
I've looked at many, many different ghost videos uh, in the research for this film, and obviously there are many fakes. It's a pretty normal story. Um, people in this building had heard uh, the voice of a young girl, and somebody had briefly seen a very faint apparition of a young girl walking around in the corner of this empty room and so the story behind this video is that a person gets their camcorder they go up there and sure enough you can very very faintly see the outline of a young girl if you don't like ghosts then hide behind the sofa for the next few seconds Ghost of the young girl is what's known as a persistent apparition. And these are particularly scary because in the movies, uh, you know, perhaps we're all brought up to, you know, to be told that if you see a ghost, don't worry, just uh, switch on the lights, clap your hands, make a loud sound, and the ghost will go away. Well, um, that is, I would say, uh, truthful for m most uh, sightings of uh, apparitions and ghosts. However, um, there is a phenomenon, and that is known as a persistent apparition. And a persistent apparition is particularly scary because you may clap your hands, you may switch the light on, you may uh, make a, a sudden gesture, and the ghost doesn't go away. Mm. Psychic and spiritual phenomena have occurred throughout the history of mankind, often touching the lives of learned people and peasants alike. Socrates and Joan of Arc both heard spirit voices, which prophesied events to come. The Old and New Testaments of the Holy Bible are brimful of psychic and spiritual phenomena. The character we have come to know as Jesus of Nazareth was said to be able to see and talk to spirits which had possessed the bodies of the living. The ability to prophesy future events by receiving telepathic messages from spirits has played a central role in all of the world's great religions.
psychokinetic activity, such as the ability to levitate and move objects with the power of the mind, is closely linked with many of the great saints. Saint Joseph of Copertino was beautified as a saint by the Vatican in 1753. Vatican records show that Saint Joseph was able to levitate and was witnessed flying around by Pope Urban VIII himself. Trinity College, Cambridge has for centuries been a British centre of occultism, esoteric science and espionage. Students and professors of this bastion of British society have been deeply involved in magic, spiritualism and spying. The notorious part-time spy and black magician Alastair Crowley attended Trinity College and went on to lead the infamous secret society called the Golden Dawn. Scientific investigation of the spirit world and psychic abilities had been conducted throughout the medieval era. Its focal point became Trinity College at Cambridge University. Since the 1400s, Trinity College has been a hotbed of occultism and espionage, the two dark worlds often overlapping throughout the history of Trinity College. Dr. John Dee was an Elizabethan magician who used a polished piece of obsidian rock called a dark mirror to communicate with angelic spirits. These spirits dictated to John Dee a system known as Enochian magic. The Enochian system describes the spirit world and gives instruction on how to communicate with spirits of angels and demons. A Victorian secret society called the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn were to later take the Enochian system of spirit communication and combine it with the use of the so-called dark mirror used by magicians in ancient Egypt. During the Elizabethan era, Dr. John Dee was not only the pioneer of Enochian magic, but also a personal spy to Queen Elizabeth I. Dee studied at Trinity College, Cambridge. Dee was to be followed within the halls of Trinity College by other magicians, alchemists, occultists, and spiritualists. Sir Isaac Newton also attended Trinity College, Cambridge, where he wrote many articles about a spiritual domain referred to by Christians as heaven, which Newton and other scientists called the ether. The leading scientists of the day believed that a domain of spiritual psychic energy 
which permeates all matter, exists in the universe. A dense, concentrated area orbits planet Earth just above the atmosphere. This became known as the psychic ether. The existence of the ether, which is where spirits of dead people live, was well known to Dr. John Dee, Sir Isaac Newton, and the scientists who followed in their footsteps. In 1909, Sir Oliver Lodge wrote The Ether of Space, a companion to his equally groundbreaking book about the spirit world called The Survival of Man. These early scientists taught that no element could exist without having some form of relationship to the ether. The ether was the domain of spirit and the realm from which magicians and psychics such as the French doctor Nostradamus received their information. Following in the footsteps of John Dee, British occultist, the self-styled Beast 666, Mr. Alistair Crowley, who would go on to be a part-time spy for MI5, attended Trinity College in the late 1800s. Whilst Crowley was a student at Trinity College, three Trinity Dons decided to found a society to investigate the spirit world. In 1882, Edmund Gurney, Frederick William Henry Myers, and Henry Sidgwick founded the Society for Psychical Research, otherwise known as the SPR. For the next 100 years, two groups, the Golden Dawn and the SPR, would invest thousands of hours of research and fortunes into the spirit world. On the one hand, members of the Golden Dawn would use Dr. John Dee's system of ancient Enochian magic to invoke and communicate with spirits of angels and demons. And on the other hand, the SPR would finance thousands of seances, inviting spirits to manifest and speak with the living. Just six years after the founding of the SPR, Britain's most famous and powerful magical secret society was formed in London. The Isis Urania, Temple of the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn, was established on March the 1st, 1888. Its founders, Dr. William Robert Woodman, William Wynne Westcott, and Samuel Liddell McGregor Mathers, were all Rosicrucian Freemasons. The Golden Dawn was a depository of occult knowledge. Alistair Crowley joined after attending Trinity College. Other members included W.B. Yeats and the author of Dracula, Mr. Bram Stoker. The Golden Dawn invoked spirits using magical techniques taken from Dr. John Dee's Enochian system of magic and became the main magical secret society for British aristocrats 
and royalty. The Golden Dawn was heavily influenced by the writings of Helena Petrovna Blavatsky, who would later be outed as a fraudulent psychic by members of the Society for Psychical Research. Rituals using the so-called Dark Mirror were performed at Golden Dawn ceremonies on a regular basis. The Dark Mirror is a piece of polished black obsidian rock which is placed inside the magic circle. It is used rather like a crystal ball. The magician watches the reflection of his own face whilst invoking or calling a spirit. Etched into the surface of the dark mirror is an ancient Enochian or Kabbalistic design which helps mesmerize the eyes of the magician and enter a hypnotic trance. The magician's reflection would morph into the face of a spirit which would then telepathically communicate with the magician. Adajita Rupa Ahe Zodo Nu Go Nu Fa Ife Salada Vi E Ro El The Bame Yata Regi E Zoda Zoda Zod E Adapehe Tati Rema Abrimaji Tata Labo Alakalada Alistair Crowley used opium as part of his daily diet in order to free himself from everyday life and to communicate with spirits. Crowley was copying the traditions of magicians and shamans who have inhabited all continents of planet Earth since the dawn of man. Before I talk about the Ouija board, which I have a, a lot of experience with, I would like to say that under no circumstances do I, I recommend that anyone even <clears throat> remotely experiments with the Ouija board. And the reason for this is because it is, for me, um, the most easiest gateway um, to the spirit world and the Ouija board has been outlawed quite rightly so in many countries around the world but it has a fascinating history and we can't really make a film about the spirit world without actually talking about the Ouija board in the 1700s um, French travellers in North Africa in uh, Morocco in a town called Oujda saw fakirs. Um, these are street performers, they're psychics, they're fortune tellers, they're soothsayers. Using an alphabet scratched out in the ground 
and using um, entranced snakes, cobras. Um, and what would happen is that the fakir, the word fake, by the way, comes from the word fakir. Uh, the fakir would um, produce a kind of trance-like state in the snake. He would ask questions and the snake would sort of nod its head at various letters scratched on the ground. Um, the French travellers brought back this idea that uh, you could get spirit messages uh, just by pointing at different letters and numbers. Um, they brought it back to Europe, um, it then made its way over to America and believe it or not, Ouija boards were marketed as a novelty um, by various games manufacturers in America and they corrupted the name of the town in Morocco uh, which was originally Oujda which is on the northern coast of Morocco um, it became known as Ouija and um, eventually then it became known as the talking board there have been a lot of bad cases of people receiving really messages from bad spirits via the Ouija board now, <clears throat> the interesting thing is you don't even need a Ouija board to use the same system. You can go out and buy a box of Scrabble and you can lay out an alphabet and uh, the numbers from 0, uh, 1, 2, 3, up, uh, up to 9, hello, goodbye, and uh, you can um, just ask, is there a spirit in this house? Now, a spirit usually does come through and if you're using an upturned glass which is the most common way of getting the message from the spirit to to spell out words the force and the speed and the preciseness of the movements of that glass can be really quite astounding I've seen the top layer of varnish removed in less than an hour from a wooden table um, by the force of uh, the spirits moving that glass. Um, now, you know, this is very, very dangerous because the Ouija board is totally unlike ceremonial magic. In a magical ritual, um, you would entice, invoke a particular spirit. Uh, with Ouija, you just ask, is there a spirit in the house? And bang, usually the glass starts moving straight away. Now, um, here's a message for everyone who is involved in the so-called New Age. Just because you have a discarnate spirit speaking to you through the Ouija board, that does not automatically imply that that spirit has good intentions. In actual fact, spirits lie and cheat and are mischievous exactly the same as people are. A typical example is um, where a spirit of a famous bad person, um, the favourite would be, say for example, Hitler, or a mass murderer like Stalin, and that would come through, spell its name out and start giving you information. Of course, uh, 